ML Sports Take here brought to you by Rosie's Corner, Stanley Law Offices, and our great friends over at CH Insurance. In your corner every day, every way, visit chinsurance.cc for more information today. Well, kind of a get-right game for the Buffalo Bills. Uh, gots to have it game. They did perform. Um, this probably was taken two ways if you're a diehard Bills fan, you know, member of Bills Mafia. Number one, super frustrating that you lost to this team in week one because essentially it's not even really, there, there aren't any differences to this Jets team uh, other than Zach Wilson's actually gotten worse, if that's possible. And the O-line has gotten worse and Zach, and, and the injuries have gotten worse on the O-line with Mekhi Becton and company. But um, so frustrating that you were, uh, you know, in this game up double digits in week one at the Meadowlands and blew it. Um, again, one of three horrible losses for the Bills this year that could keep them out of the playoffs. Patriots, Jets, and the Denver Broncos, although Denver now playing a little bit better. But I don't care if Denver plays better and even if they get in and Bills fans can justify and be like, well, we lost to them, but look at how good they are now. No, because the game was won with the 12 men on the field penalty. I don't care if it was the Chiefs, Eagles, 49ers, Jets, Patriots, Jaguars, Titans, Texans, or somebody else. It doesn't matter. That penalty is so inexcusable against any opponent when you basically have the field goal miss the game won, and then you're like, oh, wait a minute, you guys had too many men on the field. It basically a Pop Warner mistake. So I ain't going to go down that road, but... This Jets team is horrific offensively, and I was totally on board with Sean McDermott taking the field goals early. I thought it was only a matter of time with the Joe Brady offense that was getting going uh, quite a bit in this game. Even when they weren't getting touchdowns, um, I was getting tons of text messages during the game from people you know, asking me what, what my thoughts were. And basically, my, my main thought was, I have no qual. I have no issues with this offense. I have no uh, 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 complaints. Um, they just weren't finishing. And to me, there was an immediate blend, an immediate balance, an immediate urgency, an immediate intensity, an immediate focus, and a drive, and utilizing um, spaces of the field uh, that we hadn't seen in quite a while, probably since the Dolphins' domination, uh, you know, in Orchard Park in Week Four, um, and so. That is a credit to Joe Brady. It's a credit uh, to a degree of McDermott in terms of, you know, creating some kind of a spark. Uh, I do think that the end game was that Joe Brady, you know, uh, getting promoted probably was the right move. Uh, Ken Dorsey being fired and all the rest. I wonder if he almost could have, because he was so beloved in the locker room. I got to thinking this morning, you almost wonder if you could just flip him. Be like, hey, Ken, would you take a demotion back to QP coach and we'll promote Joe Brady? Probably wouldn't take that. Who would? Uh, but but just a thought um, before the actual firing. Um but again, I'll I'll repeat what I said in previous videos. I mean, for people who don't think, uh, you know, that I thought Dorsey should have been fired eventually, you're crazy. Um, but I didn't, I thought he was something, not everything. Just like I think, you know, McDermott is something, not everything. And Allen is something, not everything. Like the puzzle in football has to come together, man. And, um, you know, I think Ken Dorsey, you can't blame him for all the drops and look at the Joe Brady offense last night. I mean, they were playing an elite Jets defense. It does look like they're kind of, withering a little bit. I, I, and I would say that they are because they're on the field all the time because the offense is so bad, but it's still pretty much the same defense uh, that played the Bills in, in week one. And I mean, you could see playmakers and the ferociousness uh, of the defense in spots still. I mean, Sauce Gardner, he was getting torched a lot of the game, but Quincy Williams is a beast. DJ Reed is a beast. Quinn and Williams had a sack in this game. He's a beast. That was the only sack of the game. Great job by the O-line of the Bills and Brady and Allen for getting the ball out quickly. But the ones where Allen was hopping around and waiting and all the rest of the old line held the row, man. They held up uh, that big time Buffalo brick wall for him. So uh, you have to credit them as well. But that's pretty much the same defense as uh, as week one as well. And uh, it was great to see the Bills attack. It was great to see the balance. It was great to see the utilization of the middle of the field. One of the similarities, though, with the Dorsey and uh, Brady offenses so far, again, this is a very small sample size. Gabe Davis is just nowhere to be found, man. He's been replaced by Khalil Shakir. I mean, that's where we're at. And Stephon Diggs, by the way, had a ton of drops last night. I mean, you know, if, if he doesn't have those three, four drops in this game, Josh Allen has probably, what, he probably goes 24 of 32 uh, with like a rating over 108.2 and a QBR uh, of greater than 46.2. So the drops, the turnovers, the BS, you can never plan for that in the in the middle of a performance, right? And and, and certainly that was the case where Ken Dorsey, you know, the firing part for him, he he couldn't help. That. I mean, those those things were, weren't his fault. But um, 
I was really impressed with Latavius Murray and James Cook, kind of the one-two punch type of a deal. Shows you why Sean McDermott should have never benched James Cook after the fumble last week against Denver. But Allen took what the defense gave him, which was good, but then it set up the home run plays, which we also haven't seen. And it's funny because a lot of Bills fans are like, oh, Josh, you got to stop gunning it down the field. Then when he takes what the defense gives him, then people want him to chuck it down the field. I think a lot of people don't want him to chuck it down the field when he's turning the ball over more. I think those two things go hand in hand. The only turnover happened last night where the Hail Mary, where he threw it into the wind, it came up short. I was actually shocked they were going for it. I thought certainly conservative McDermott would have just downed the ball and said to hell with it. And frankly, Allen took a couple of unnecessary hits there. So you're kind of like, okay, flip the coin here. Um, but anyway, they went for it and that's fine. And, and I, I'm, I'm all in on that and being more aggressive. And, um, you know, if you can throw a couple, you know, ropes to the sideline and all the rest and get a field goal before half, Hey, it's just more points, you know, to go up in that situation, um, where you were up 16 to six could have been 19 to six, but it didn't matter either way because the Jets offense is so freaking inept and, and they were shut out of three quarters in this game. I mean, just horrendous. They are so bad, but overall, very, very happy with the complimentary football that wasn't overdone in a complimentary way, if that makes sense. And taking the short stuff, the screen plays, I loved the one play where Allen sort of, he hiked it and then he, he rolled out. It was almost like a you know, instead of faking the run this way and then rolling out like bootlegging style, he kind of just went like this and ducked down and ran, you know, almost like a, a bootleg on his own without faking a handoff. And then just a quick little throw, you know, to Ty, uh, Ty Johnson, who uh, he had his impact in the game as well in terms of catching it and running it. You know, he had three catches for 47 yards and a touchdown. That was an awesome call on the actual touchdown play. Um, but it was Shakir, it was Kincaid, it was Johnson, it was Cook. It was a little bit of digs. He would have had more, obviously, had he not had the drops. Quentin Morris was in there. We saw a lot more of the 12 personnel that was talked about in preseason when they drafted Dalton Kincaid. They wanted to have the Dawson Knox, Dalton Kincaid 12 personnel situation. That's going to be interesting as well because Dawson Knox is actually uh, available to play starting this week against Philadelphia. The team just hasn't talked about it at all, but that's going to be an interesting one to see from uh, you know the 12 personnel standpoint. I think that's uh, one thing to pay attention to. So they brought the 12 personnel back. My computer is going off with sound here. Um, and so... <clears throat> uh, you know, you can't you can't push Dalton Kincaid to the side. I mean, he's he's the number two option in the offense right now behind Stephon Diggs. So uh, you've got him uh, probably coming back uh, again. 14 million seems a little high to me. I don't know what the dead cap hit is with him. But uh, to me, I think after this season, you got to think long and hard possibly about cutting Dawson Knox. I know as harsh as that sounds, but um, Dawson Knox paying him 14 million dollars a year to basically be a blocker. Uh, the guy does have a lot of drops. Uh, he's nowhere near the factor that Dalton Kincaid is. Um, you know, if you run 12 personnel, what do you do with more? I, there's just so many questions now that Kincaid's in the picture, which is another reason why you probably paid Dawson Knox prematurely, but that's a whole other thing for another uh, video here. But overall, was very pleased with the Bills offense with Joe Brady, uh, utilizing the uh, uh, middle of the field, taking what the defense gives you in terms of number 17. And then from there, that bullet throw from Allen to Khalil Shakir was a thing of beauty. I mean, just an absolute dime uh, right through, you know, a couple of lanes in terms of the defense. And um, Shakir ran and ran and ran and ran some more. And that dude is fast as hell, by the way. Um, it just, it was an overall awesome football play. I think we're looking for more of those 20 plus years uh, 20 plus yards rather, um, you know, from Josh Allen. We've seen that through the years with him during the Dorsey offense. Some of them were kind of stunted. Josh Allen not running the football. He's been neutered, McDermott, this and that, you know, trying to take what the defense gives you and, you know, kind of putting a cap on Allen. Well, he didn't have a cap on him, you know, last night. And I think taking what the defense gives you, though, also opened up, as did the ground game, uh, those, you know, a couple of long throws, in this case, a secure play. Uh, that went for 81 yards. It was just a tremendous, tremendous throw uh, catch. I mean, everything just worked right in that play. And if you don't know uh, who Dan or Orlovsky is of ESPN, you got to go find him on Twitter and find the video breakdown of this sort of the cover three thing and how they had digs in the slot and mixing and matching and disguising Cook and all that sort of thing. That was really interesting. By the way, the Bills... I don't love them in shotgun a lot, especially down in the red zone, but I think I saw it was either Matt Perino or somebody said that they had run 13 straight shotgun plays, then they go under center and all the rest. So there was a nice mix of that as well. Um, but when they got hot in the shotgun, I think that opened up things as well. 
at things as well. And I think you have to remember one thing, and I'll say this in closing. Um, sometimes in certain games, like the run opens up the pass and other ones, the pass opens up the run. And it just kind of depends on how you prepare. And then when you go out there and what adjustments they make, and then you have to kind of move the next chess piece up, right? So I think that, you know, last night was a situation that was different than maybe some of the other games that the Bills have had in terms of adjusting to the, to the, to the Jets defense. The Bills were some short fields, obviously fumble right off the kickoff. They only got a field goal out of it, but again, they worked a shorter field uh, there uh, instead of just going all the way down 80, 90 yards all the time. The Bills had the field position thing going on as well last night. So a lot of the things that we haven't seen in those brutal games, barely beating the Bucks, barely beating the Giants, losing to the Pats, losing to the Jets, losing to the Broncos, those kind of games um, really came to fruition here. I do understand that the Jets, the offense plays a huge part in the Bills winning this game, but Nonetheless, it was pretty much the same defense, although a little bit more of a tired defense late in the year, and certainly they're on the field all the time, um, but still very encouraging against, I would still say, a top three defense in the NFL. I mean, I think Cleveland's number one, and then from there, I, I might take the Jets still. I really might, and then go to, like, San Fran. Um, I Kansas City, I probably would put maybe at three, and then San Fran four. In fact, I'd probably I'd probably do that uh, right now. So uh, pretty, pretty impressive uh, by Joe Brady. Again, now it's up to him and Allen and McDermott and everybody else to keep it up here, keep the intensity and the focus and all that sort of thing and the energy. You saw Josh Allen crack a couple smiles. You saw him with some intensity at the beginning of the game. That's what everybody, including Sean McDermott, wants to see. And, uh, you know, he, he he was going crazy with Khalil Shakir with a celebration by the fans after the 81-yard touchdown. So uh, those were the things people wanted to see. I don't know if it was commented so much that it was forced on Allen. He did it to shut people up. Maybe it's a little bit of both. Who cares? But the Bills get it done 32 to 6. And now they've wrapped up the soft part of their schedule where they completely shit all over the place. And now they head into the gauntlet of the end of the year games. Oh my God. At Philly, bye week. At Kansas City, Dallas at home. At Chargers, home for New England. At Miami. What do the Bills need to do from here on out? Well, they're 6-5, and five, and looking at the scope of the AFC playoff picture, I think the Bills need to win every single game from here on out but one. I, I think they really do. I think, you know, maybe you're looking at splitting Philly, KC, and then you got to win the last four, and that's a really tall order. Uh, it's, it's a hard thing to ask of a team, but again, that's why you don't lose to the Patriots, Jets, and Broncos. You're 6-5 and five right now. Could you imagine if you had those three wins, you would be probably talked about as the number one team in the NFL. NFL right now with a record of nine and two, nine and two, as it is, you're six and five, you're still struggling, you're still in the hunt, you're on the outside looking in, but if they play the way they did against the Jets, and I know it's a week to week thing, right? Every week and coach and system and venue and everything is different injuries, but everything's different week to week. We know that it's a week to week league, but, um, they're capable of going in and beating Philly. They're capable of going in and beating Kansas City. They're capable of going in and beating Dallas at home. They're capable of winning the last three games. They're capable of winning on on the road against Miami if it you know if it if it means it. They're they're capable of winning the division on that day if if it means it. So they are capable of winning all those games. Maybe the better bigger teams will be something where the Bills gear up more. You know maybe they just ratchet up for those teams like they ratcheted down for the bad teams. I don't know, but. Certainly something to keep an eye on uh, for the Bills here. But I think that, God, I mean, they got six games to go. I've always said that it was going to be 11-7 and seven to win the division. I, I think that's still the number. Uh, it's probably the number also to make the playoffs with the way these other teams are playing, Cleveland and company. Uh, Cincinnati, though, however, is, uh, you know, hurting without Joe Burrow. Uh, Cleveland, you know, can they can they sustain this? I don't know. Um, you know, and, and you kind of go and look around now with Pittsburgh losing yesterday. Uh, I mean, are they really going to get into the playoffs with that offense with Matt Canada and Kenny Pickett? Um, you know, I, Dolphins, you know, their schedule looks pretty, pretty easy compared to the Bills right now. Um, you know, I, there's just so much to look at and, and it's such a crowded field. I mean, now you got to deal with the Texans, the Texans and the Jaguars are playing for, um, you know, what looks like, what looks like the, well, it is the AFC South uh, lead. You know, you got the Browns hot. They go into Denver next week. What happens if Denver wins again against the Browns and the Bills lose? The Broncos now jump ahead of the Bills because 
they would have a better record. And don't forget, they have the tiebreaker because they just beat Buffalo. So all those AFC tiebreakers are coming in and the Bills don't look good in that department either. So very, very frustrating to, to, to still look at the Bills overall picture right now. But for one game and one game only, the Bills did what they had to do. Mike Lindsley with you here. It's an ML Sports Take brought to you by Jam and Beats, Rosie's Corner, Brewerton Ace Hardware, and our great friends at Ken's Auto Detailing. Right now, $120 for a full car detail over at Ken's Route 11 in the Brewerton Cicero area. Make sure you go see them on on Facebook for more information, the official detail house of the ML Sports Platter. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.